Chapter 7, Extra Topics Centers of Mass and Theorems of Pappus This is a view of Crater Lake in Crater Lake National Park in Oregon and that's Wizard Island in the center. Centers of Mass by the way, this photo was taken at a city park in Washburn, Michigan on Lake Superior. Torque is a function of force and distance. Torque is the tendency of a system to rotate about a point. In this photo, we have a downward force and a horizontal distance. If the forces are all gravitational, then torque equals the summation of mass times g, which is the acceleration due to gravity, times x, which is the distance. If the net torque is zero, then the system will balance. Since gravity is the same throughout the system, we could factor g out of the equation. We get m sub o equals the summation of m sub k times x sub k. This is called the moment about the origin. If we divide m sub o by the total mass, we can find the center of mass or balance point. So x bar equals m sub o divided by m, which equals the summation of all the distances times all the masses divided by the summation of all the masses. For a thin rod or strip, Delta equals the distance per unit length. The moment about the origin is m sub o equals the integral from a to b of x times delta as a function of x dx. The mass is a summation from a to b of delta as a function of x dx. So the center of mass, x bar equals m sub o divided by m. That is the moment about the origin divided by the mass. For a rod of uniform density and thickness, the center of mass is the middle. For a two-dimensional shape, we need two distances to locate the center of mass. If we imagine a thin strip of mass dm, that is a small change in mass, x tilde is the distance from the y-axis to the center of the strip. And y tilde is the distance from the x-axis to the centroid of the strip, which is the midpoint if the strip has uniform density. x tilde, pronounced x tilde. The moment about the x-axis, m sub x, equals the integral of y tilde dm. The moment about the y-axis, m sub y, is equal to the integral of x tilde dm. The mass is just the integral of all the partial masses, so it's the integral of dm. The center of mass could be located then by finding x bar as m sub y over m 
and y bar, which is m sub x over m. A little vocabulary. Center of mass is equivalent to center of gravity, which is the same as centroid. Normally, we can use these three terms interchangeably. Constant density delta is also referred to as homogeneous or uniform. For plate of uniform thickness and density, the density drops out of the equation when finding the center of mass. Here's an example, and I'll ask you to use your imagination. Consider the shape underneath the curve y equals x squared. As an artist, I would like to cut a piece of plate steel in that shape, and I would like to hang it by one cable from the ceiling of the Gallery of Modern Art so that it hangs flat and level. To do that, I need to find the centroid. I consider a thin vertical strip. X tilde is the distance from the y-axis to the centroid of the strip. In this case, x tilde is just the x-coordinate of our function. y tilde is the distance from the y-axis to the centroid of the strip. And y tilde is one-half the distance to the parabola. So it's 0.5 x squared. The moment about the x-axis is the integral from, from 0 to 3 of 1 half x squared times x squared dx. 1 half x squared is the distance to the centroid, and x squared dx is the area of the strip. So I simplify, find the antiderivative, substitute 3 in for x, and I get the moment about the x-axis is 243 tenths. The moment about the y-axis is the integral from 0 to 3 of x times x squared dx. In this case, x is the distance to the centroid. And once again, x squared dx is the area of the strip. So I simplify, find the antiderivative, and I substitute in the 3 to get 81 fourths. Now I need to find the mass. The mass is an integral from 0 to 3 of x squared dx, or 1 third x cubed from 0 to 3, or 9. And I should say, even though I'm calling it the mass because this steel plate has constant density and thickness what we're really finding is the area. So x bar is m sub y over m, or 81 fourths over 9, which is 9 fourths. y bar is m sub x over m, or 243 tenths over 9, or 27 tenths. The coordinate of the centroid then is 2.25 and 2.7. So I could drill my hole and insert my eye bolt for the cable at that point on the shape. Note, the centroid does not have to be on the object. For this horseshoe shape, the centroid is in space, not even on the shape. 
So there is no way we could balance that shape horizontally on the end of a pencil, for example, or hang it from a cable and have it hang flat because the centroid is not even on the object. If the center of mass is obvious, use a shortcut. For example, for a square, the center of mass is in the middle. Same with a rectangle and a circle. This one's convenient. For a right triangle, the centroid is one third of the distance away from the right corner. So it's B over three in the horizontal direction and H over three in the vertical direction. And now we move to the theorems of Pappus. When a two-dimensional shape is rotated about an axis, volume equals area times the distance traveled by the centroid. Surface area equals the perimeter times the distance traveled by the centroid of the arc. Consider an 8 centimeter diameter donut with a 3 centimeter diameter cross section. There's our high tech donut. So our dimensions would look like this. The volume then is 2 pi r times the area of the shape. That is the distance traveled by the centroid times the area. Or in this case, 2 pi times 2.5 times pi times 1.5 squared. The volume of the donut then becomes 11.25 pi squared, or approximately 111 cubic centimeters. We can find the centroid of a semicircular surface by using the theorems of Pappus and working back to get the centroid. The area of this surface is 1 half pi r squared, since it is half a circle. If we revolved it around the horizontal straight edge, we'd get a sphere and the volume would be 4 thirds pi r cubed. Using the theorems of Pappus, then the volume is 2 pi times the distance to the centroid times the area, which is 1 half pi r squared, and that would have to be equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Solving this, we get y bar equals 4r over 3 pi.